Well, hello, chaps and chappets, and welcome to a double back monthly. This one's for April 2018. What is a double back monthly? Well, it's a monthly blog that I've set up in conjunction with my Patreon, where I talk about all the things that I've done in the board game realm over the month of April. Um, and I break it down into little sections. So there's like a section where I talk about all the board games that I've reviewed and all the Birkin Badger podcasts. There's also a section where I talk about all my brand new gaming experiences, the games that I've played for the very first time and probably the last. And then we have like a little question time segment, which I still haven't figured out what I'm gonna do in this one because nobody writes any questions in. But anywho, and then I go to uh, my monthly uh, prize draw where I give one of my Patreons a, um, a prize. Yes, I send them some goodies, some promos, and um, I'm probably going to be sending them a game for next month. So uh, stay tuned to the end of the video to find out if one, you're a winner, and two, what my prize is going to be for next month. So without further ado, let's move along. So which of these amazing games have I reviewed this month? Wow. Number one, I reviewed Rising Five here, which is a Kickstarter game. It's a family cooperative game where you are controlling a team of five kind of space heroes, kind of guardians of the galaxy, or maybe even Firefly, um, as you go about in missions, beating up monsters and collecting these uh, silk cubes, which will allow you to scan these runes, which if put in the correct order, we'll seal this portal to another world. It's a very light, fluffy, quick playing uh, cooperative game where you're playing with an app and you're basically playing mastermind as you're trying to get the runes into a particular order and each room's a different color. Each color is represented by a different star sign and each star sign is the answer that you're gonna get whenever you scan. So there's a bit of a extra puzzle on top of this mastermind puzzle. But on top you've got this card playing system of, you know, uh, playing three cards of a certain character to do three actions of that character, moving them from a place to place, activating their special powers and beating up and collecting things around the galaxy. Really light, really fun, really quick playing. I really enjoy this game. It's definitely my cup of tea. Um, I, I liked it very, very much. The aesthetics, the artwork, uh, but also the puzzle solving and the ease of entry of, you know, playing this game. You can play this with practically anybody, people that don't even know how to play board games or even mastermind. We'll pick this up and play it quite easily with a bit of, you know, you know, you should play that card um, kind of help. But um, really enjoyable. I really like this game. Um, it doesn't hit the table as much as I'd like it to hit the table, but Hey ho, it doesn't matter. Plenty of expansions in there to test out later on in the future when the kids get a bit older and they, they want to go on that adventure again. So there, yeah, Rising 5. The other game that I reviewed this month is another Kickstarter. And it's now in the hands of its backers and it's called Tiki, which is a abstract two-player game where you are a god and you are trying to get dominance over the little villagers on this little three by three grid and you're placing these little tiki tokens um, on the villagers and you're moving them about and they will stack up when you move them and once they get to a stack of three whoever's on the top will get the reward that that village offers and normally it's pineapples and you're trying to get four pineapples to win the game but sometimes there's these negative pineapples so one of the pineapples will go rotten which is a bit of a pain and then there's these other expansions in there there's a nasty tiki which is can be controlled by any player who has control of the the the, the nasty tiki token that's a bit of a mouthful isn't it but um it's it's a very light quick playing i'm looking about 10 to 15 minutes game where you're battling your wits against another player it's beautifully produced with these wonderful components and um, the, unfortunately, this is the only way that you can get this game is from the Kickstarter with the beautiful components. But there will be a version coming out later in the year which won't have the beautiful components, unfortunately. It's, it's a nice kind of, 
Uh, back and forth game. This is one that I can crack open with the family quite quickly, you know, as an aperitif um, while we're, we're waiting for the burgers to cook on the barbecue or whatever. Um, it's really nicely presented. It's very simply, uh, it's a very simple game, but has a lot of depth of strategy because it is a bit, you know, tic tac toe and and crosses. But at the same time, there's like another level on top of that. Do you move your tokens or do you leave them where they are and trick your opponent to put their token on top of your tokens? And then you can come along and put your token on top. And yeah, there's some nice little random, uh, not random, but there's some nice expansions included in the game. And uh, I enjoy this game. Again, it's another cup of tea for me. It's a nice presentation and it's a fun, pleasant two player quick playing game. And there was another video which I did start making and that's for this game called Songbirds. But unfortunately, I ran out of time because I went on holiday. But um, I'll talk about that in the next section. And uh, you'll see a review of that pretty soon. That's another Kickstarter. What have Berkey and Badger been up to? Well, they've been busy. There's two podcasts that we did in April. The first one is Micromania where we talk about Micro games, ah, are, were they a fad? Have they died out? Were they still around? We talk about our favorite uh, micro games. We do a top 10, uh, not top 10, but a top five of each of our favorite micro games. And we just have a general good old laugh as usual. You can go and check out the podcast on Libsyn or any of the um, podcast media players, Berkey and Badger's board game Barrel. We just type Berkey and Badger and by the time you type Berkey, you would have found our podcast. So anyway, um, the second show that we did, we did a show with uh, Jamie Keggy from The Secret Cabal. And on this subject, he says, checking his notes, we talked about spoilers in storytelling games. Um, yes, we delve into the realm of storytelling games. And Jamie Kiggy was a very pleasant chap to come to the Kingdom of Babylon, even though we tortured him. He plagued us with some games that he loves and we had to try and guess what they were in a kind of like quiz show fashion and as i said we talk about the depth of you know spoilers and storytelling games is it bothersome for you to have a game which you can only play once because you know what's going to happen what games get around this kind of problem and you know um, is there a way to you know play a game more than once even though it's got spoilers I am your father. Why did that just pop into my head? So what brand new games have I played for the very first time? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I played Songbirds, which is a very small card game uh, where players are going to have a hand of cards numbered one to seven, and there's four different types of colored birds, and they're going to be playing one at a time into a five by five grid to try and win the points allocated along the outskirts by having the uh, the last card that left in their hand as their bird that they are betting on to be the loudest singing bird in the forest. Um, you just basically do an addition of all the colored birds in each of the rows horizontal and vertically to see if you win the points. And at the end, you just collect these point tokens and the player with the most points is the winner. It's light, it's quick, it's fun. Um, it, it just feels like a, a regular kind of card game that you'd probably play with the standard deck of cards. And in fact, you probably could play with the standard deck of cards. It's, it's fun. I, I've already played it more than once. I've played it many, many times. And there's a solo variant um, which I did not like at all. Um, it's, it's just too much luck of the cards and the card draws. But um, it, it, as I said, it's a, it's a game that I probably play again and again. It's just a very light kind of card game. Songbirds. So Back Computer says that I've also played a game called Orc Quest, which is a card game. Another Kickstarter jobby. Um, where players are orcs and on your turn, you will uh, take on a challenge, either a challenge from your hand or a challenge from the center of the table. And this challenge has a success rate and you have to get this success by rolling dice. But at the same time, other players can play cards on your turn to try to distract you, to try and take your treasure away from you, to make the, the target harder or to, to, to cut in on the, on, the, on the rewards that you're going to get. 
it's take that and you keep playing until uh, the deck runs out or you're all dead and then you see who's got the most gold it's it's simple, it's light, it's not really my cup of tea, although I do like Munchkin. This is kind of like Munchkin, um, but it has this different system to it. You're not, you, you are helping. There's no kind of like um, verbal contract. You just play cards and those cards will do the damage or <laughs> gain you success. It's light, it's fun. It doesn't go on too long, which is nice. Um, because the worst thing you want about a game which is just luck of the cards and luck of what players are going to play on your turn um, going on too long is annoying so um, yeah it's not too bad I play it again I've already played it about two or three times but I would play it again I'm, I'm not you know it's not the top of my pile for playing but um, yeah quite nice Orc Quest the Munchkin game and another game that I forgot to tell you about because back computer is not working very it's very sick aren't you back computer anyway the other game is uh dinosaur island a kickstarter game where you're constructing your own dinosaur theme park jobby and you'll be um recreating dinosaurs with their dna you'll be employing staff you'll be building rooms which will help you um get bonuses and you know take shortcuts and get money other ways there'll be um You'll be laying out your park in your own little player board with, you know, an attraction there and a little sandwich bar there and a ride there and then this big dinosaur pen and you're putting these day glow dinosaurs into your park. Um, it is a worker placement game. It plays, it's quite long and there's quite a lot of components and set up and take you down for the game because you've got different boards. You've got like a phase one board, which is the DNA, where you have these big chunky glass dice which you roll beforehand you lay them out and then players start picking dna and then you have like um another central board where the dinosaurs are you'll be picking the dinosaurs from you have a central board for these extra people that you can hire as assistants you will have um as i said these rooms which will give you bonuses to let you do extra actions it's worker placement um there's not really much interaction um it, it, it plays nice but i don't think the game is, is balanced enough for me i left me with a sour taste in my mouth because i created an, a nice kind of even park but um this other my my best friend created a very dangerous park with lots of carnivals in it and they had lots of people die during the course of the game um, which is negative points but it wasn't negative points enough for me because they still won um, you know they seem to play very recklessly um, and if you're playing recklessly you don't score as many points each round and a, a niggle that niggled me was I was always the first player because I I had more points than everyone else but everyone else was behind so it always goes into like a reverse order of points on the board and you get to choose your DNA and as I said you roll these dice and it tells you what DNA is about and there's some rare DNA and there's some common DNA and it was the rare DNA that got picked all the time by the first player which kind of left you with the common DNA which meant that you had to spend time transform it into rare dna now i mean there are other ways of doing it but it, it just that whole system bugged me that you know this player was getting all the best dna they were taking all the risks they were losing lots of points but at the same time they won the game because their park was just full of carnivals and it didn't feel just you know if you wanted to create a park with just herbivores could could you still win hmm but um yeah it was okay um not my cup of tea really it's a worker placement, it worked. Um, there's nice components and nice ideas, but it was just too much, you know, you, you're in your own little box here, and the only interaction is the, the items which people take, but there's there's so much choice, you don't feel like you're, you're losing out, whereas in something tight like Agricola, you know, there's that competition, and then there's that interaction that way, and you can block people that way, but um, this game is just, kind of wishy-washy and uh, as I said I felt it was unfair but, but that's that's just my first opinion because this is a first opinion section of first times I've played games hmm. so that's Dinosaur Island I've got some more games that I've played 
for the first time, but I actually played them in May. So I'll be, they're sat over there and there's Can't Stop and Azul, which are brand new, which I bought on holiday. And I'll tell you about that in the next section. Let's talk about holidays. We actually went on a kind of last minute holiday um, and holidays are very rare for us because we, we go away, but it's always to the other family. So when I was living in England, it was to come over here and see the family in France and vice versa. And now it's, you know, go see the family in England. So uh, a real holiday where we're going away somewhere and my wife likes camping, so we went camping, is a rare thing. And um, of course, going camping, you're gonna be sat at the swimming pool reading a book, or you're gonna be stuck in the rain in your caravan, because that's what it's like in Britannia. Yeah, <laughs> it's either very nice or it's very wet. Luckily, it was mainly nice. But anyway, I took some games, and I took, of course, Songbirds, which my wife couldn't get her head around for some reason. And I also took Harold, and again, my wife couldn't get her head around that. Uh, my daughter took Kenjin, and we played that. And the wife couldn't get her head around that. And I took Elder Signs. They're all small games, apart from this one, it's just quite a big. Um, this way I could play a game on my own if need be and hopefully these are games that I haven't played a lot of recently and they're games that I wanted to play I know you know I could have taken other games get small games which we, we're guaranteed to be played like um, the Bois de Kutsu or um, Set or Hanabi or um, even Quirkle and Splendor were games that I could have taken but I took games that you know, I haven't played a lot of and I want to play. I play these games a lot, those other ones, but I want to play these ones. And um, luckily for me, my wife couldn't get her head around them. So we went and found a game store and we bought some more games that we could play in the caravan. <laughs> so as I mentioned earlier, bought a copy of Azul. The wife's been hearing a lot about this game and um, she said, let's get Azul. So we got Azul. Played it. I'll tell you more about it later. I'm not going to tell you much about it. And also got a new copy of Can't Stop, Woohoo! which um, uh, we played quite a lot of actually while we were there because it's quite simple. Uh, and they're both simple games. And that's one thing that you should probably take in consideration. You need to take games that are simple um, that, that you can put into your, your bag quite easily, so it needs to be small and compact. Um, the wife was even talking about like taking all the components out of a big box and putting it into a small bag so we could take it and play it, but I didn't want to do that. And um, it, those, those are things that you need to think about. It needs to be simple, it needs to be small, and it needs to be fun. I mean, we could have taken Uno. We'd have had fun playing Uno probably all the time. But um, yeah. Um, just some word of advice as well from someone that's played board games outside in a glorious day like it is today. Um, if you're playing on the decking, be careful with your playing pieces. We have actually lost a couple of pieces. An Elder Scroll token fell off and um, one of the Can't Stop tokens fell off the table, rolled around and before disappearing down the slot. So, <laughs> lessons learned. There you go, there's a little bit about board games to take on holiday. You, you need to, you know, there need to be, you know, a game that you can play on yourself and also maybe a game that you can play with a few players or many players. I mean, set would have been perfect for that kind of thing. So, there you go. If you want some advice on holiday games, they, there are some. If you, if you want to leave some comments below of holiday games that you recommend taking because, or any ideas of, you know, other suggestions of things like small, easy games to play, to take on holiday, then uh, write them down in the comments.
So now we're at the stage where I get to thank my Patreons for their support because without them, the website wouldn't be running and functional and wouldn't look so good as it does because I've been able to afford a really decent looking website. That is BoardGamesEverybodyShould.com if you don't know what the website is. So I'm going to do my little personal thank you to everybody. I'm going to say thank you to Robert. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Curly T. Thank you, Elephant Girl. Thank you, Olivier. Thank you, uh, Grogan. And thank you, Andrew. Um, your continued support is very much appreciated. Um, although I don't use it to, 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 to buy many things. As I said, I've bought a new camera when I started the Patreon and then I bought some new lighting, which brightens up this space and I'm going to use some of this money now that I'm, I'm getting from the patrons to contribute towards paying for a board game to be delivered to a lucky winner um, and that will happen as of next month the game is I don't have a copy of it now but I put an image here is this game by Bruno Fiducci called Small Detectives Ooh, it's a good game I need to get a copy myself and I'm gonna send someone a copy next month so um, if you're still pledging and still backing, maybe you can get a copy yourself. So anyway, the prize draw, how does it work? Well, I was going to look for some components that I could use from Netatanka, which is a new work in progress Kickstarter game, which I've got to do later on this month. Ooh, exciting, huh? So expect to see a video for that. Um, but um, where it's a prototype and everything's like wooden components and meeple, I thought, well, let's try and make this book more interesting. Um, and a game that I played recently is this one right here called Signs Elder, um, where you are trying to open a portal to let monsters into your world. And I was going to use the monsters, but I can't pronounce their names. So I'm going to use the heroes. <laughs> so Mandy Thompson is Elephant Girl. Michael McGlenn, McGlenn? Yes, McGlenn. Michael McGlenn is Olivier. And we have Harvey Walters. Um, I think we all know who that is, don't we, Berkey? And then we have Daryl Simmons, who is going to be Robert. And we have Jenny Barnes, who is going to be Curly T. There you go, five cards in this mix. Remember that if you want to be a Patreon as well, just go to my Patreon page. Every board games, everybody should. You don't need to donate a lot. But if you donate five dollars or more you can get yourself some promos and you also get entered into this monthly draw that i do so here you go as i said next month i'll be giving away a game Ooh. so i've stopped i draw the top card i reveal it to you guys i can't see who it is because it's all it's all it's daryl so robert congratulations i'm going to send you um Unfortunately, this month I'm only going to send you some promos and a copy of my CD soundtrack. Well, the digital version of my CD soundtrack last night in the post to you right away. Thank you again, everybody, for um, participating. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for everyone listening to me dribble. Um, holiday brain is in mode. As I said, there's going to be a review of that coming. And I, I started a review of Songbirds, which is coming. And, of course, I've got these new games here, which... I've played quite a bit of and I will be reviewing them hopefully if I have the time. On top of that I am still continuing my work with the Seventh Continent soundtrack and I'm also continuing my work with uh, the Chronicles of Crime soundtrack as well. So um, I've got a lot on and a baby to 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 look after as well. So um, if you don't see much material I apologize but you should see quite a bit. As I said this is a definite, that is a definite. And then, as I said, some of these other ones are possibly going to do that definitely as well. So thanks very much for watching. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like. If you know someone that might appreciate this video, share it with them. And if, if I can remember the words for what I'm meant to say next, I will tell them to you. Um, remember, share this video. Yeah, you shared this video. Go to my Patreon if you want to help support the show and well, the show of us support anyway um and um it's not much of a show is it i wonder if waldorf and Heck the, the hecklers will be up there somewhere heckling me somewhere but anywho i'm kermit the frog thanks for watching <laughs> and i'll say uh remember to play nice with each other because it is only a game and remember board games are not just for christmas you can take them on camping holidays i'm gonna have to put that in the credits now just sitting at the table